This mini lecture is on the roots of American literature. Let's begin with a quotation from Howard Zinn, who wrote A People's History of the United States. Nations are not communities and never have been. The history of any country presented as the history of a family conceals the fierce conflicts of interests, sometimes exploding, often repressed, between conquerors and conquered, masters and slaves, capitalists and workers, dominators and dominated in race and sex. And in such a world of conflict, world of victims and executioners, it is the job of thinking people, as Albert Camus suggested, not to be on the side of the executioners. We take this quotation as the center of how we're going to be looking at our American literature. And it's important to point out, as noted by Howard Zinn, that it's a matter of perspective. So we'll be looking at this literature from a historical perspective, but I do want to point out that there are other perspectives that we can use, such as, but not limited to, Marxism, which looks at the power dynamic between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, or those with the money and those who are the workers. Feminism, the dynamic interplay between the genders, and critical race theory, the power between the the different races at different times. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that much of the literature that we study is often based on a Western European point of view, but it is not just told by those in power. I try to choose literature from a wide variety of perspectives, viewpoints, and power dynamics. The duration of the United States culture is only about 500 years old, but it's really important to note that people have been residing in this space for upwards of around 20,000 years. So the topics for today, which all overlap, but also can be discussed separately, are, are power, who is in charge, the text, the printing press was created in 1439 and it became a lucrative business. The push and pull of immigration. Why were people pushed here and what pulled them here? And then also the social issues of the day. And so we're reading early American literature, which for the purposes of this class included literature from the 1700s to the 1860s. And so we're going to look at these key topics that interest that Americans at the time were interested in writing about. So let's first take a look at power. So during the 13 and 1400s, the Muslims took over much of the East and even Eastern Europe. And so it was noted as the Islamic golden age, and it was technologically and scientifically flourishing. It had a stronghold in Africa, Eastern Europe, and were moving to the Mediterranean and they controlled the main trade routes. So those in the West, Western Europeans, were becoming desperate to find other ways to get to those resources that they desperately wanted from China and India. And so once the Americas are accidentally, quote unquote, discovered, and discovered means by the, East, the Western Europeans, <laughs> it didn't need to be discovered by the people who were already living here. The, they began to leverage those resources that they were able to find, gold, silver, herb, slaves, land. Uh, they were able to leverage those resources. It's important to note that when the explorers arrive, as I noted, there were already flourishing civilizations. Among others, there were the Incas, the Aztecs, and the Northeast League of Nations. They have their own trade and ways of using the land with the onslaught of Europeans who had diseases that were different than the natives had encountered, many died. Um, the germs that were brought over were germs uh, 
such as smallpox and measles, diseases from living close to livestock and chickens. At that point, those who lived in the Americas did not have these same animals. So now let's take a look at text and the printing press, which was created in 1439, and what that meant. So the printing press created a culture. Print becomes a part of culture. The advent of the printing press is 1439. It allows the scaling up of newspapers, books, and flyers. And one of the reasons that American literature is so narrowly defined to the last 500 years is that it emerged at about the same time as this print culture. So it was a moneymaker. So money is to be made from print products, which were used to create laws, advertise, inform, pass along religion. And as more people begin to learn how to read, uh, education via reading gives access to push back to those in political, economic, and religious powers and they become deeply ingrained. So those people who are writing in the United States were influenced by the traditions inherited from different European powers, such as Spain, England, and the Netherlands. And print, because it was such a, a massive moneymaker, it also advertised that America was a place to come. People might not have known that had there not been print. And so there was, because of this large migration of many different peoples coming from different cultures, much of their journeys is documented in writing. So for example, charters in very early colonial times would be established. And so those types of writing become a central piece of American identity. So now let's talk a little bit more about the push and pull of those who came to live in the American space. So let's talk a little bit about the push because it becomes so difficult for the Western Europeans to get their resources from China and India. They're looking for other places to get them. And so there's no other places for Christian-led countries to go in order to find that power and prosperity. And they're very nervous, though, just so you know that it's not like, oh, wow, this is really exciting. They're very nervous because they believe that the world is flat, Earth is flat, but they're also desperate. So, you know, those in power decide that they're going to try and find other trade routes to places that they already know, not knowing that the that the earth is round and that there's other land to find. So even though it was a dangerous and long journey from Europe to the Americas, people still made that journey because there was so many wars and raids, okay? So people are and so that's really important. People's land is destroyed, their communities are destroyed and they have nowhere else to, to go. Um, it's also a place for undesirable, and I put that in quotation marks, undesirable populations. So, for example, people are banished for religious region, reasons. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, Isabella of Spain in the 14 and 1500s made all the Muslims and Jews leave the country. There also was a Protestant Re Reformation, which caused dangerous strife between the Protestant and Catholics who were living in Western Europe. And as noted earlier, with the creation of the printing press, more and more people began to learn to read and have exposures to the Bible for their own analysis. So even among the Protestants, it wasn't just one point of view. There's many different factions that developed, including but not limited to Calvinists, Lutherans, Puritans, etc. And then again, while the U.S. is initially a place to send unwanted populations, you know, so for example, in South Carolina, it actually started as a penal colony at first. Once they arrive here, those who live here do the same thing. They send its unwanted populations to the Western frontier. 
So let's talk a little bit about the pool to the Americas. So countries were looking for resources, they were looking for power, and the Americas offer hope. So countries were looking to empire build. And by association, once Europe has a strong foothold in the Americas, those privileged immigrants also look to expand their own empire, which they do as they move westward with Manifest Destiny. And so Manifest Destiny, if you don't know, is a 19th century, 19th century means that's the 1800s. You always take a number back from the century. Um, then 19th century belief that occupying as much of North American, the North American continent as possible was justified in a, in, and inevitable. So they believe that it was their right as people living in the Americas that they had the right to take what they wanted and it was okay and they were and it was going to happen anyway. Uh, in 1823, the U.S. creates the Monroe Doctrine, which states that it is opposed to a European colonialism in the Americas, and yet they're wanting to, to, to take over everything themselves. And the United States, uh, you know, it's a country at that point, reaps rewards from this. Uh, other populations who want to come to the Americas, as we talked about, are those people facing religious prosecution. And it's really important to understand that these various religious groups who come, uh, they have this belief that they have a right to believe what they want to believe. It's very individualistic. And that comes from this idea of religion. So even though later on they'll say, my religion is the only correct religion, they fight fiercely for the right to have their own belief in that. And that's not an attitude that was previously um, part of culture. It's really important to point out that the space of the Americas, it's so large. There's lots of food production, including wheat and rice, as well as vegetables and space for livestock. In fact, the reason why the United States becomes such a meat-centric culture is due in due to a large part because of the meat supply that's able to be raised. And if you've ever been to barbecue or you've been, you know, you've been to Texas or places that have these big, beautiful steaks that you can eat, America is one of the very best places to get that quality of meat because there's that space to raise that livestock. Um, and then also, let's take a look now at the social issues. So as a result of all these things that I talked about, about power and, you know, who's in charge and the onslaught of the print culture and the push and pull of various immigrants, let's talk about the social issues. So because all this was happening, uh, based on the history of the day, and I want to remind you for the purposes of this class, the history of the day is that time of the 1700s to the 1860s, there were key topics that Americans were interested in writing about. They were very interested in liberty and rights, and even if they took the liberty and rights of others, they were interested in their own. And so we're going to be looking at the liberty and rights of several different types of um, people who lived here, including the natives, including black Americans, including uh, men, including women. So those were big topics. Uh, a massive topic is religion and morals. Everybody has an idea of what it means to be religious and moral and how people should live. A big topic is the idea of the form of government, you know, the United States is based on what's called a democracy. And so it's considered to be an experiment. So people write a lot about that. And it didn't start out being the United States. It started out being a colony and colonies of uh, Great Britain, but also colonies of other places in Europe as well when it started. And when I talk about the Americas, there's North America, Central America, and South America, which 
the languages that are spoken there today are based on this history of this particular time and who came over and who colonized and took over that location. Another top, topic is, again, so war and colonization. So again, we start off, um, if we're looking at the United States as a colony, and then we have several wars. And so people write about wars, they write about, you know, what's why somebody would go to war, what the cost is, you know, um, et cetera. Technologies and progress is um, an important topic. And then finally, also ecology, like the ecology of where we're living, as well as trade. So these are not the only topics, but these are a lot of the main topics that you'll be reading about this semester. So I look forward very much to studying this topic from you with you and learning what you what your perspective is and looking forward to interacting on it. Thank you.